I believe the customer expectation has gone higher and it's driving a lot of the businesses with that. Mm -hmm. And the example that comes to mind is not a technology example, but that's something that probably dates me as well. It's the Nordstrom example. Nordstrom, I, I, I bet he's going to say Nordstrom. <laughs> exactly. And the lady who walked in with the tire saying, hey, the tire. I, yeah, yes. I want to return it. And we returned it for her, even though Nordstrom for everybody watching is a clothing store. Hello, my name is Lisa Roger from Otimo, and I want to welcome you to the CIO podcast. So welcome everybody to the CIO podcast with Lisa, and we are so excited today to have Abudi Rustam uh, here from Coach, and I'd love to introduce you guys to him because he has got a very interesting background. Um, so Abudi is an IT executive with over 20 years of senior level leadership, enabling growth and operational efficiency through digital transformation, which happens to be our topic this year. So we're really excited to have you. His unique value proposition is strong business acumen and the ability to leverage existing and emerging technologies to enable growth in high competitive environments. He's a problem solver, a calculated risk taker, delivering cross organizational solutions to achieve business strategic objectives. He brings seasoned experience in cloud services, AI, software development, governance, and cybersecurity. He's a strategic visionary with hands-on experience developing employees. His leadership philosophy is anchored in fostering a collaborative cultural base on trust, honesty, and mutual respect. He strives to create an atmosphere of transparency and openness, investing in people to build high-performing teams that deliver results. Abudi holds an MBA in finance and technology from George Washington University in DC and a Bachelor of Electrical Engineering from the University of Arizona and multiple industry recognized certification. Um, and also Abudi is a finalist with Capital CIO for CIO of the Year. So very exciting uh, time for Abudi. Um, on, and as a pastime, he loves racquetball and playing chess and he currently lives with his family in Virginia. So welcome, Abudi. Thank you, Lisa. Great. Uh, super excited to be on this podcast. I'm excited to have you too. I know we're going to have fun um, just getting to know you uh, over the last month or so. It's been really uh, exciting. So I, I think everybody's in for a treat. But as a warm up to get us warmed up, we're going to play a little game called Rapid Fire. And I think you know the rules. But just in case you don't, in case the audience has forgotten, Abudi's going to get two options. He's going to pick one without explanation and without hesitation. He's going to give us his gut response. And then we're going to quickly go through a series of uh, options. So are you ready? I am ready. Okay, here we go. Mac or PC? PC. Coffee or tea? Tea. Unix or Windows? Windows. Texting or calling? Texting. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Mac or PC? Obviously PC. Summer or winter? Summer, all the time. Samsung or iPhone? Oh, that's a tough one. Samsung. Printing or cursive? Cursive. Land or spicy? Ah, uh, spicy. On-prem or in the cloud? Always in the cloud. Mountain or ocean? Uh, mountain for me. Early riser or night out? As late as it can get. <laughs> fiction or non-fiction? Non-fiction. Sweet or unsweetened? Unsweetened. All right. Take in or dine in? Dine in. All right. Star Trek or Star Wars? Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Why? Okay. I always let, I always, as you know, let people explain this one because there's so much vested interest. Why Star Trek over Star Wars? 
Well, I, I grew up with it. I grew up with getting like small box that flips over and we say, beam me up, Scotty playing exactly with the kids in our neighborhood. So this is something I grew up with. I, I'm like, it's my identity, so to speak. I love it. I love it. Same thing. You smack your badge and talk to people that... <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> And, and we lived in, in, in a house where you have to go up the stairs so many times. I wished I can go this way and be up on the fourth floor, but that doesn't work. <laughs> no transporters in your house. No transporter whatsoever. <laughs> that is fantastic. Perfect answer. Perfect answer. Um, yeah, you and I grew up at the same time, so we have the same background of, uh, of watching Star Trek. I know I watched with my dad a lot when I was growing up. Um, well, I, I, again, I want to thank you for coming and spending time with us today. It's, um, you know, we're all about transformation at Otimo and helping organizations. And we love talking to people like yourself who have the experience and have been through, um, you know, through the trenches of helping organizations with their transformation. So can't wait to learn from you today. Um, and let's just start off with like, let's start off at the top because that's often like w where we like to start with these conversations because that's often how it's initiated. How does like strategic vision and transformation, how does that all come together in your experience um, to get a transformation project going? You know, as you said, in, in our day and age, I think technology is the way I look at it is an enabler to the business. When, when you're talking about digital transformation, you're talking about a process of where you're integrating technologies into all aspects of the business, you know, to improve uh, and transform its operation, products, services, streamline processes, you know, improve product and services. But at the core of it, I think it comes two aspects that I usually feel are always impacted. One is the culture of the business because you're moving and shifting from one environment to the other. And the second is customer experience. So Very good. When, when, when we're looking at digital transformation, there are, in my opinion, uh, five pillars that you as a technology leader working in partnership and in synergy with your business stakeholders have to take into consideration. First and foremost, I think customers is a key pillar that you have to take into account. Um, competition, where you stand in the market and how you're gonna navigate through and be ahead of your competitors. Data, which ultimately we will take a little bit more time to speak a little bit more details, mm -hmm. is becoming uh, the forefront of how we can manage and make decisions, you know, drive informed decisions. Um, innovation, you know, um, and, and where does it play in your organization? And then ultimately, uh, the value. Everything at the end of the road has to produce a value for the organization. And the value has to be directly tied to the growth and advancement of the organization. So to me, when it comes to talking about digital, digital transformation, it's taken into account the entire ecosystem when it comes to all the five pillars that I've talked about, which touch in within the organization all aspects of it. I love it we started off right off the bat with five pillars. I love it. You, you, you just like, I think you just provided the title for this podcast, the five okay. pillars of digital transformation, customer, competition, data, innovation, and value. I love it. I, I it's just like, it's a good punch. I love it. Perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. A perfect start. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I think, you know, um, when I'm looking also at digital transportation and, and transformation, I'm sorry, um, it, it is a, a partnership engagement that must take place, you know, one from a business model and product perspective, uh, where you're looking to, you know, do more with digitization, 
you know, uh, what are the new opportunities? But the key aspect to it that I usually um, like to highlight is to self-disrupt or mm. start uh, kind of a challenge the status quo. And if you look at the successful companies, the disruption happens in one of two ways. Either you self-disrupt or the market forces you to disrupt. That's I'll right. give you two examples. Look, for example, at Netflix. A great example of how they have self-disrupt, moved from the CD to streaming, yep. from streaming to generating their own movies, from generating their own movies to distributing movies. And then the evolution keeps on going with the focus, and we will talk about that a little bit more as well, how do I engage my customer? That, you know, you're 100% right. And I love I love that self-disruption, um, how you how you coined that phrase, um, because it is, right? Disruption is going to happen. The one thing that's inevitable, other than death and taxes, is change, <laughs> right? I exactly. Mean, yeah, exactly. so you, it's much better if you can do it to yourself than have it be done to you, right? You don't want to be blockbuster in this story, right? Right? So, and it's interesting because you, you can either self-disrupt, the, the, disrupt, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. or um, a new emergence of a disruptive technology forces you to do so. You know, a good case in point right now, and I think, I know we didn't want to talk about AI, but Gen AI mm -hmm. is, a good, is a good example, yeah. right? It is yeah. disruptive. It is impacting an entire industry or, or the industries in general, and everybody is uh, attempting to figure out how to adapt and adopt, you know, and, and how do we work with new, this new cutting edge technology and how we want to be able to leverage it in our business. Absolutely. And it, um, I'm glad you brought that up and it got, it gets me to thinking, you know, again, we're talking at the strategy level, but as your role as CIO, um, you know, what is keeping you up at night around? Is there a disruption other than AI or is there something with technology that as you look to the future that you're concerned about or that you have your eye on or you're curious about? I, I think as as we move forward with, with great question, by the way, but as we move forward with technology, I think uh, two aspects are becoming paramount, in my opinion. Um, privacy yep. and security, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we operate in, 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 a, in a new era, I would say, with, with Gen AI, for example, what are the new ethical standards? What are the new controls that you're gonna put in place? What are the new governance that you have to, to, to work through, right? So, and, and in that, as data becomes proliferated across the environment, how do you maintain its security? How do you maintain the privacy of your customers and so forth? So to me, from a, as, as a technology evangelist, I'm always looking through the human eye, so to speak, and say, okay, well, how do I protect my privacy? What are, what is, what are the consequences that I need to be aware of? You know, because usually regulations and governance trail the advancement of technology yep. you know that's true when, when we're talking about you know um self-driving cars well there are no guidelines or at least we're developing the guidelines of how we're going to manage that from an insurance perspective from a liability perspective all of that stuff so mm -hmm. so those two aspects are always something that i i take into consideration and figure out hey you know that's that's two challenging areas. I love it. This is great. And you're absolutely right. The plane is already in motion in flight half the time. And then we're big, we're scrambling behind, you know, from a governance and legal and regulatory perspective, you know, after it's left. But um, that's kind of the the scary and the fun part of technology, yep. though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, they, when, when they tell me about digital transformation, the way I describe it to them, um, it's like changing the wings of the airplane while in flight. Right. 
you have to give the business has to keep on going, right? Uh, and you just have to figure out how to make those adjustments and how to make those changes in a way that improves that flight while it's going. So it's it's a lot of fun, a lot of challenges, and that's where I would like to be in the midst of it. Yes. Oh, that's great. That's great. All right. I want to. You you gave us your five pillars. Yes. I'd like I'd like to focus on the middle one because when you and I were coming up in the eighties. It was follow the money, right? Follow yeah. the money. That was the line, right? Follow the money, follow the money. Now it's follow the data. You know, yeah. if you, it's data, 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 it's money, money, money. No, no, no. It's data, data, data. And if you don't understand data, um, you, you know, you're you're going to be left behind. So talk about a disruption uh, yeah. when it comes just to power. Um, but let's talk about, as it relates to. Um, a transformation. What is the role of data? How do you like, it's a monster. How do you get your hands around it? I mean, it's, I will tell you, Abudi, I can't tell you how many transformation projects I've been involved with where the business owner, that's the one place they do not want to look underneath the covers. They do not mm -hmm. want to, I mean, I'd, I'd love to hear your experience and what, what your thoughts are on that third pillar of data. Yes. Great question. Um, uh, so, so to me, I think data in and itself is going through a paradigm shift. Uh, starting with, I think, understanding the value of data, managing that data, but more importantly, two aspects. One, how do you turn that data into an asset? You know, mm -hmm. and how you ultimately generate value from the data. So if, if we go down uh, memory lane, you and I for a little bit here, you know, right. when, when we started, um, data existed everywhere. Uh, nobody knew what they have within their environment. So um, it was expensive to manage, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it was uh, to produce and store as well, right? So. Companies started by investing in technologies to, to understand data, you know, and, and we have at that time, if you recall, structured, unstructured, right. and then we moved into how we can process it in a little bit faster. So in memory computing came, came into play, Hadoop, if you recall, started yep. kind of get that movement. And, and then the revolution of how we store data and access that data subsequently moved into natural language processing, machine learning. If you allow me to date myself, IBM Watson was the big thing at that time. It you know? was, maybe a little and bit before its time. Maybe so. Uh, and, and at that time, I think big corporations and enterprises had an advantage in the sense that they had the ability to purchase computing power, they had the ability to hire the best and brightest uh, in, in the industry and, and drove a little bit up until the point where the rise of cloud computing came. And in my opinion, that leveled the playing field in the sense that it provided access to all businesses, even the small ones, to high computing access and power to manage their data and control that data and pay by the usage. So when it comes to the data, if you think about it, it's all about now good data strategy. How do you turn your customer data into a business value? Right? So from the at the beginning, I think you start with the acquisition. And as you said early on, which is right, right on mark, you know, you look into your internal systems and what do you have. However, from a data acquisition perspective, now we have a wider spectrum. You're looking at your customer exchanges data, social media and so forth, your supply chain, chain partners, your vendors, even public data. And what's that allowing us to do is as we put together all those sets of data to develop an insight that ultimately we can use to identify patterns, 
in customer behavior, to look at how products are performing, where is fraud or abuse being done, you know, and, and start building the foundation of a data-driven decision-making process, you know? Perfect, Let, let's keep talking. I want you to okay. keep pulling that thread around data and strat, like, I love the framework, everything that you said. I love asset, assets and value. I like how you teed it all up. But from the beginning, what strategies do you, or what tactics do you use to make sure that you have those two end goals in, in mind and that you can get there to get the value? What does that road look like? What are the, you know, what is that path, that journey so that you're in that nirvana place where you can go ahead and you know, you, you can, you can make data an asset and you can get value out of that data. What is that? Right. What, what strategies do you use? So I think it, it all starts honestly at understanding the business. And from a technology perspective, you have to embed yourself with the business. So if you tell me, for example, what is the role of the CIO? I will tell you to be a trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. Someone that will allow the business to understand what is available to them and potentially be the rudder to steer them in the right direction. So to me, embedding yourself with the business, understanding the business, figuring out exactly what are the key differentiator and the value add proposition that your company is providing out there. If I don't know, I, I follow different people on, on, on social media. Simon Sinek is one of them. Oh, and, yeah. And awesome. the question of why always resonates, right? So you need to really understand the business, the why of the business, evaluate what you do have from a technology assets perspective. And that's not only system, that's people, that's skills, that's... Uh, you know, uh, position all of that stuff, and then ultimately derive how you're gonna be able to augment the value of the business by that digital transformation. It's not only for the sake of doing digital transformation, it's for the objective that you are attempting to achieve. And that is gonna go through the proper rigor, you know, like proper ROI, you know, and uh, proper business analysis, value and you're working with different aspects of the business marketing sales products all of that stuff right so there is that is how you get there by making sure that you understand the business making sure that you understand the capability of what you are going to deliver and based on that put the strategy to be able to maximize on that and, and make data as a value generator i, I love it the CIO is the rudder. I'm gonna like totally steal that. That is a gem. Thank you for that one. Uh, but you're, you are 100% right. You know, the, the trusted advisor, understanding the business. It's the, you know, I, I've said this often um, and, and I've had many of the guests uh, bring it up as well, uh, that the CIO is in a unique position of all the C-suite positions that are often available in that um, it's the one role where having that level of intimacy of understanding across the business process across the firm or organization is key and, and understanding the data so that they can get that value out of it. But you have to really understand all elements of the business to do that uh, so that you can be that effective rudder. So um, that was perfect. Really. Thank you for that. That was really, really good. Thank you. Um, I yeah. So, all right, let's, let's, let's take it like one more layer deeper and talk about the customer experience. Mm -hmm. CX and, you know, all the fancy acronyms people use, like, what the heck do they mean, Abudi? And how does this come into play? How does this like, how important is this for transformation? It is, in my opinion, uh, at the heart of the transformation. I think every business, in my opinion, is competing at this time for the customer time, customer attention, and customer money. Yes. 
So, however, and, and that being said, I believe the customer is evolving in alignment with technology, and if not, in some instances, driving the technology innovation. Mm-hmm. So let me illustrate, you know, uh, historically, if we go back, the customer experience was reflected in providing a quality product and delivering good customer service. However, I believe the customer expectation has gone higher and it's driving a lot of the businesses with it. So let me let me illustrate that in a couple of examples. Sure. And I'm gonna describe for you two parallels here. The first plane is moving from commodity to experience. And the way what I mean by that is ultimately when we started, we just sell you a good quality product. You know, uh, and, and a good example that, so that's a tangible product, right? And a good example of that is the Apple iPhone. You know, although I am a Samsung person, would still refer <laughs> to Apple iPhone. Uh, so that's a good tangible product. And then from there, you move into delivering excellence in service. Mm-hmm. And the example that comes to mind is not a technology example, but that's something that probably dates me as well. It's the Nordstrom example. Nordstrom, I got it. But he's going to say Nordstrom. <laughs> exactly. And the lady who walked in with the tire saying, hey, the tire. I, want yes. I want to return it. And we returned it for her, even though Nordstrom, for everybody watching, is a clothing store. Right. So that's the customer service. And then you move even higher into an engaging experience. So in that, I'm going to give example as Disney. And when we refer to Disney, what do we refer to it? Quote unquote, the magical Magical. place. Magical. Why? Because it creates a memorable experience, right? And you cannot have a memorable experience without a good quality product and excellent service. They build on top of each other. Right. right? So this is where we are moving as a business from providing a tangible good product to a memorable experience. And those that succeed on that path are the ones that are leading the way. That is great. I'd love that. The second plane is more on the technology side. And where we are moving, I would say, from access to collaborate. And let me expand on this a little bit. Please. So in our digital age, the way you're going to get to your customer is by having access to that customer. And the way you provide access to that customer is by making sure you have a mechanism by which it is, you know, simple, convenient, ubiquitous, and flexible, you know? So whether it's on mobile, on tablets, on web, what have you. And once you get that access, you engage your customer, right? So you go through the appropriate definition of how can I help that customer do X, you know? And we'll go into a little bit more example on that as well. And then from there, you start customizing the content for that customer. So I use Spotify. And I yeah. love it. when I log into Spotify to say, hey, Abudi, we selected this playlist for you. And believe it or not, 99% of the time, it's exactly what I would like to hear. You know? <laughs> or, or Netflix, you know? And this is where, for example, leveraging recommendation engines, uh, using personalized interfaces, like for example, Lancome, which is the beauty uh, product. Yes, I'm very familiar. Allows you, exactly, allows you to upload a picture of yourself and apply makeup on it so you can see how you look. I mean, look at the level of engagement at that level, right? It's for you specifically. And I think this is what it is. But ultimately, I think what we're looking for is to transform 
no pun intended, that customer to be our advocate. So when you're going from, you know, access to collaborate, that collaboration is an advocacy. And as you look at it, if I have a memorable experience, I'm going to advocate for you, right? I'm going to speak to my family, talk to my friends, talk to my social network, to my colleagues, you know? So as you see, the two planes are merging where we are moving in a, I would say, upward trajectory of engagement with our customers to a point where they, we want them to become our advocate, like influencers, like other people that they have. So that's, that's where I see the CX, so to speak, coming into play, where identifying what is the product, build the product in a way that is simple to use, can be customized, and engage the customer so they can advocate for you, whether it's a vendor, it's, a, it's an individual, what have you, but at that level. I love it. So creating this customer advocacy, which are, you know, based on two foundational things happening at the same time, you know, around the actual like experience and, and the need and, mm -hmm. and then really having that, you know, unique experience where that advocacy can actually occur. Yep. This is just beautiful. Oh my gosh. This has <laughs> been, this has been, I have taken so many notes, Abudi. I, I cannot, I mean, I need like five more pages. I cannot, this has just been one of the best podcasts I've ever done. So I want to thank, thank you. I mean, the, the five pillars, the two aspects of new era of technology, privacy and security, um, you know, making data both an asset and a value stream, making sure your CX or your customer experience has got those two foundational elements that result in advocacy. Um, wow, I, I don't know what we're gonna title this one. So, I, I mean, just so many good nuggets. Um, but since we're on the wisdom lane, yeah. so Abudi, you walk into your favorite place to get a cup of tea because you pick tea over coffee and rapid fire and remember that. Um, yeah. You're gonna have some tea um, and you meet 20 year old, your 20 year old self and you have an opportunity to pass on a nugget of wisdom or two. What would you tell yourself? Wow. Uh, so I'll start by saying, um, do what you love, enjoy what you're doing. And the key to success is to challenge yourself and challenge the status quo. Make sure that you're always looking for an innovative way to generate a value and a quality product always speaks for itself. That's wonderful. That was great. <laughs> well, I just want to thank you so much. This has been my honor. I'm, I've, I, again, I know I've taken, like I said, a page full of notes and I'm going to steal many of your quotes. Um, I love the CIO is the rudder. That's one of my favorites. Um, um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for um, spending the time today. This one is definitely a gem. And um, I just want to um, say thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did. And uh, tune in next time. Take care. Lisa, thank you so much. Oh. I am so honored and, and privileged to be on your podcast. This has been definitely an amazing and challenging conversation and, and a beautiful exchange. Uh, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on this platform. And uh, I look forward to many, for uh, many other encounters. You are welcome. And again, uh, thank you, because um, this was, like you said, it was very engaging conversation. And, uh, and and I always try to learn something. and I definitely learned something today. So well, thank you. I appreciate thank you, that. Thank you. All right. Thank goodbye, you. everybody.